If you've been following the channel, you know I tested PicaOS 8 months ago. Back then, it was the exciting new kid on the block. Debian stability mixed with Arch-like speed. It was fast, stable, and I was very satisfied with it. Now, 6 months later, we are in 2026. PicaOS has gone through major updates, kernel shifts, and driver optimizations. So, the question isn't just does it run games better. The question is, it is finally good enough to be your only operating system. To find out, I'm using my daily driver, an ASUS TUF A15 2024 model. This laptop comes equipped with a Ryzen 7 7435HS paired with an RTX 4060 and 32 gigs of RAM. I did just run benchmarks for 5 minutes. I sat down, I updated everything and I played 5 different titles. I encountered bugs, I waited for shaders and I tweaked runners so you don't have to. This is the reality of gaming on PicaOS in 2026. Let's get into it. First up, we have Where Winds Meet. This is a visually stunning game, but on Linux, it forces you to make a choice right at the start. When I launched this to Steam, I hit a wall. Vulkan Shader Pre-Caching. Now, you have the option to skip this, but if you find yourself in this situation, don't. I sat there and waited for literally one full hour for those shaders to compile. It was painful, but if I had skipped it, the stuttering would have made the game unplayable. Because I waited, the gameplay itself was fascinating. I started on ultra settings and my 4060 was sweating a bit. I was seeing dips below 30 FPS in crowded areas. The game is just incredibly heavy on GPU. However, the moment I dropped the preset down to quality, the experience completely transformed. Suddenly, I stabilized at around 60 FPS and I want you to look at the frame pacing here. Even when I'm sprinting through complex areas, there are no micro stutters. That one hour of compiling shader paid off. It feels like a native console experience provided you tweak those graphic settings. During the benchmarking of this game, I kept testing between different graphic settings as you can see. Next, I wanted to tie something free that a lot of you might pick up from the Epic Game Store, Wildgate. This was the only game in my test that refused to cooperate initially. I used Battles to manage my Epic Games and the default runner, Soda Runner, just couldn't handle it. The game wouldn't even launch. This is where being a Linux gamer requires a little bit of know-how. I went into the settings and swapped the runner to GE Proton 10-28. That's the great thing about Linux, it makes swapping these compatibility layers very easy. Once I made that switch, the game launched instantly. Performance wise, it's all over the place in a good way. On high settings, I'm getting anywhere from 80 to 120 FPS. It depends heavily on how cluttered the screen is. But even when the FPS fluctuates, the input lag is non existent. If you're planning to play this, just remember don't give up if it crashes on launch. Change that Proton version and you're golden. We cool it with ice. Broken windows and fires are bad, but they won't destroy me. My reactor health is what matters. Head outside and look for a comet to mine. Betcha loves to... Oh, you're outside. Okay, let me tell you some things. Uh, you carry some oxygen with you in a small supply. Hold jump to fly. Oh, and one more thing. If you get in trouble, you can always teleport back to me. <laughs> My last crew teleported back to me a lot. 
They will say stuff like... Uh, we didn't win, but that fight... Mm. Ion has four arms, and even he can only carry one thing at a time. That's then the rules. Before I get to the next game, if you are finding this video helpful, hit that like button and consider subscribing. It really helps the channel. Thank you, and let's go back to the video. Moving on to the Division 2. I run this through Steam, again utilizing GE Proton 10-28 with graphics on high. Look at the counter. We are hovering between 90 and 100 FPS. But numbers aside, the game just feels right. The division is all about cover mechanics and quick picks. If you have latency, you die. On PicOS, the responsiveness feels identical to Windows. I played for about 2 hours straight and I didn't have a single crash or disconnect. It reached the point where I forget I'm even running this on a compatibility layer. Let's slow things down with Amnesia the Bunker. I ran this via battles from the Epic Launcher. And I have to say, this was the star of the show. Optimization here is flawless. With everything set to high, the game was basically locked at 120 FPS. In horror games, immersion is everything. A single stutter or frame drop can ruin the tension. PicOS handled this perfectly. The frame timeline is flat. If I were to let someone play this blind without telling them it's Linux, they would never guess. It's arguably running better here than on some Windows machine I've tested. It's a 10 out of 10 experience. I was the last one. We're trapped down here. The red fucking Finally, I couldn't finish this test without pushing the RTX 4060 a little harder. Let's talk about Resident Evil 2 Remake. The big question with Nvidia on Linux is always ray tracing. Does it work? Is it worth it? I set the game on high with ray tracing on medium. The result was a respectable 60 to 100 FPS. It looks incredible, the lightning, the reflections, it all renders correctly with no artifacts. However, if you want raw speed, turn ray tracing off. The moment I disabled it, the frame rate shot up to over 100 fps and stayed there. Personally, on a laptop screen, I prefer the higher frames over the reflections. But it's good to know that PicOS and the proprietary Nvidia drivers are handling ray tracing correctly now. The choice is yours.
Claire! Hold on! I'll be right there! Okay! Claire! It's so nice to see you. How are you doing? So, is Peak OS worth the install in 2026? The performance is definitely there, the stability is there, but you have to be willing to tinker a bit. I'm curious what you guys think. Would you be willing to wait one full hour for shaders to compile if it means getting a smoother experience than Windows? Or is that a deal breaker for you? Let me know in the comments. And if you enjoyed this video, hit that like button to let me know you want more benchmarks like this. I'm Catalin, this is Linux Network, and I'll see you in the next one.